SEO lovers, my name's Kate Toon and I'm the head chef here at the Recipe for SEO Success. And today we're going to be talking about schema and structured data. And if that all sounds a little bit technical, well, don't worry. I have an extra special guest today who's going to help us understand everything we need to know. Tony McCreeth is an SEO expert based in Adelaide, running his business website Advantage. We've been chatting online for maybe three or four years now, but met in person at Big Digital Adelaide last year. Now, Tony began fiddling with computers when he was just 16 and has been optimizing websites since 2004. He's been running his own business for six years and now focuses on more specialized areas such as technical consultations and structured data implementations. So who better than to explain the world of schema to us today? So hello, Tony. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to have you on the show. Now, I just did a little bit of a bio about you there, explaining what you do and how we met. Is there anything else you think the listeners need to know about you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm English, if you can't tell. Uh, living in Australia now, Adelaide. And uh, I come from a very technical background from uh, a childhood playing on computers. And somehow I accidentally got into marketing. And, and Google, all things Google. Now, I must apologize, Tony, if it sounds like there is a pterodactyl about to land. Um, I'm in my back garden, in my little hut, my toon cave, and all the birds have suddenly decided to descend. It's like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. I just want to give a warning to complete newbies to SEO. This week um, is more for those who have a little bit of understanding of how a search engine optimization works. So, you know, it's one of the subjects that my graduates have been very keen to learn more about. But if you're completely new to SEO, this might be one of the episodes to skip and come back to a little bit further down the path towards SEO success. Um, but we're going to do our best to make it as easy to understand as possible, aren't we, Tony? Yes, we are. Yeah. We are. So today we're focusing on schema and I'm just going to give a little bit of an explanation of it here. And I even made some notes to make sure that I got it just right. So schema is a way to define the information on your website in a more structured way. Obviously there's lots of content on your website. It's all there and Google can read all of that. But what schema can do is just make it that little bit easier for Google to understand what your site's about. And another name for schema is structured markup. So you might have heard schema, you might have heard structured markup. And schema markup works across all search engines, all the big ones, all the ones we care about. Google, Bing, Yahoo, and Yandex. And it possibly works across other search engines too, which is not 100% sure. So Tony, what can you add to that? Well, I've, you've got a little note here, which I love, which says things, not strings. What on earth is things, not strings? <laughs> Yeah, so this uh, uh, way back uh, uh, a Google conference, uh, they came up with the term things not strings. And basically search engines for years have been just uh, analyzing text as a bunch of strings of words and that's how they rank them. Google suddenly went, we want to do it better. We want to, uh, instead of just a pile of uh, words, they want to understand what the words are about and what they're talking about. And so probably a first step on that is when you start seeing things like uh, on the side, if you search for Obama, it'll give you loads of information about Barack Obama, his family, his age, because they understand he's a person and they understand yeah. all these things that are related to him. And so it's been a while. Google's been trying to think about things, uh, items, people, buildings, all that, and understand that. And that links in with uh, the idea of structured data. Tony, can we start by giving us a bit of an explanation of how schema works? We've all probably, lots of people have heard of schema.org. So can you just break it down for us? How does it actually work? So uh, schema.org was put together by Google, Bing, Yahoo, and uh, the Russian one. Yeah, Yandex. And it's basically just a way of defining uh, these things. Uh, before then, there was lots of different groups that were having their own inventions of this. This is how you define a business. This is how you do that. And so these things were not talking to each other. They were all yeah. different languages. So schema org is just a way to have this one central place to define 
say a local business and it says that a local business can have an address it can have a phone number and a very consistent thing uh, so from that definition there are multiple ways you can actually uh, implement it on your website or in fact anywhere in the world it doesn't have to be a website but a, uh, on websites you tend to do it in a language called microdata so let me try and put it in a different way because that's what i always like to do i think it helps people understand it i feel it's almost like little labels for content but it's like google bing yandex yahoo have all agreed on the same label so you know if it's a recipe and it's got some ingredients that you write use this little piece of microdata called ingredients and all the search engines will understand that those are the ingredients is that is that a simple yeah. way of explaining it yeah that's great and it goes beyond search engines uh, there's a lot of people out there trying to find out what things exist in the world so with this common language uh, anybody can write a little spider crawler bot and go around the web finding out all this information because it's so standardized that's pretty amazing, isn't it? And pretty great that all the guys got together and collaborated. Isn't that a lovely, lovely thing? If we're talking about, say, for example, an event, so you're using some schema markup for dates and events on your web pages to make it easier. You know, what sort of, what sort of labels would be used? What sort of markup would we be using for something like that? Well, schema defines a specific uh, type called event. And it's actually relatively easy. You can, you can go to schema.org slash event, and it'll tell you every single thing you can define, every property that you can put in an event. Uh, so it'll have things like the name of it, uh, its location, uh, when it starts, when it ends. Probably, now this is off the top of my head, you'll have who's the presenter. Yeah, the price maybe, something like that. Price, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they call, in, in the definition, it's, uh, they call it offers. Uh, so you can provide, this is what you offer at a certain price and things like that. Uh, and I, th I think at the moment it's mainly kind of like for musical events, but uh, people are starting to use it for things like uh, your, your sort of events, the uh, online events and things. Webinars and things like that. Yeah, because yeah. I think, you know, schema is expanding all the time. People are adding to it new new, la new labels, as I'm going to call them, are, are coming along. Um, you know, and it started off being just for certain certain things, didn't it? But it seems to be growing and covering more and more now. Yeah, they've, they've just released 3.1 and it's added some stuff. And uh, it's, it's also, you can, you can add your own private stuff on top of it. So that there are certain like uh, niches or uh, areas where it's like, I presume like libraries, and they want so much more detail than the average Joe. So they'll use the schema and then add, bolt on their own extras to it. Uh, so it's, it's very flexible and it's also open source. So I can go in and say, can I have a schema type for Tony's SEO? Which is great. We talked about open source in the previous episode. For anybody who doesn't understand, it just means that the code is open. It's open. Anybody can contribute and add to it, whereas, you know, some things are closed and they're not open source. Mm -hmm. So schema sounds pretty awesome and a great way to help Google get through your content and understand your content better. And we all know that we help make Google's life easier. It sometimes is good for our website and improves our chances of ranking and improves our SEO. So let's talk about ways in which schema helps with seo what are what are the main ways uh, well at the moment google denies it has any influence on ranking oh google google's always denying things <laughs> but, but uh, i i believe well if you've got schema on there to tell google what you're talking about if google understands what you're talking about better you'll rank better for what you should rank for. And so uh, it, it's a kind of, it'll balance, uh, but say at the moment you're ranking for the wrong stuff, it'll, uh, it'll push that down and push the right stuff up. So it, it, it's a helping hand. And, and Google realized that when they started doing this schema thing is they can't work it out on their own. They need our help and uh, hence schema.org. Yeah, so I think ranking, it's more of a evolution, it's, it's a, not a direct thing. Yeah, but I think there's more direct impacts. And one of the ones I've noticed, particularly with a couple, is um, the, the rich snippets, which we'll explain in a minute. But particularly for me, I've noticed with products, the review stars, the products mm. that I have on my website 
clever copywriting school which have star ratings the star ratings come up in the index which makes it so much more clickable you know the click-through rate on those is going to be so much higher and um let's talk a little bit about rich snippets let's explain those to the users and how schema helps with those yeah uh in fact we've got two names there's rich snippets and rich cards now uh it just all it means is you've got your standard uh, search result which is a title little green URL and short description. Uh, the rich snippets and cards are just adding to it. Uh, like you say, review stars, you might get your product price in there. Uh, there's a thing called breadcrumbs, which just make your URL look a little nicer. Uh, and they're all things Google work out via structured, uh, by a schema. Okay, so rich snippets sound pretty awesome. Uh, a couple of other things that uh, schema can affect is Google Shopping, Knowledge Graph, and Google Local. So let's talk about each of those. Google Shopping, how does schema help with that? Uh, well, schema lets you define your products and the reviews on the products. Uh, and so uh, you can get rich snippets from that. Uh, it also uh, links in with uh, the Google Shopping advertising system. Uh, to help speed up uh, understanding your latest product prices, they'll actually go onto your page and read your, your schema. And you, you'll even get told off if it doesn't match up. It'll be going like, too many products do not match the prices on your website. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's being pulled in in several different ways by Google to uh, enhance you in different areas of their search results. What about Google Local? Because I know that that's a big thing for lots of small business, lots of shop front businesses. How can it help with Google Local? Uh, there's nothing really official there. Uh, they, they'd let you mark up things like contact points, a phone number, uh, your logo. Uh, but uh, as far as it influencing how you do locally, there's nothing official. But it always makes sense that if you've told Google exactly where your business is and uh, exactly what your business name is because Google's very keen on what they call name address phone number consistency. The NAP, so the NAP. So having that on your home page, uh, just putting it in uh, as a kind of little header thing on your home page means Google instantly knows that this website is associated with this business. Yeah. It's so, a great idea. So consistent NAP, name address phone number. I like to call it NAPWA. Uh, assistant name, consistent name, address, phone number, and web address. But yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't sound as good. So we know that on schema.org, you can go in and you can look at different types of schema. There's schema for events, organization, people, local business, products, recipes, creative works. Um, so you can actually go in and find the little labels. I've got to stop calling them labels, but I'm just, I've got excited about that term. For, that match your particular type of business. Now, like, there is maybe a little bit of a min misconception that schema is only for things like recipes and products, but it is applicable to local businesses as well. In fact, uh, so a local business is a specific type that Google or schema supports. Uh, if you're e-commerce, you're probably more classifying yourself as an organization. Uh, and so there's types that match up well for all the different variations. Uh, I'd say it's not 100% yet. There's some things you can kind of go, why can't I do this? When you have to join in and start writing it yourself. <laughs> yeah, maybe that might be a bit advanced, but we can come to you if we need anyone to help us. <laughs> Basically, there's a type of schema to suit your business, pretty much. We're, we're thinking that pretty much they're all covered. Well, let's use some examples because I think examples are a great way of sort of driving home how this works. I have an e-commerce store. I don't really. I'm just making this up. I wish I did have an e-commerce store that sells shoes. How would schema work for me? What sort of, what sort of schema markup would I be using? So the, the most important thing would be the product markup. So on all your shoe pages, you'd want to mark up that uh, this is a page about a product and that uh, this, this product is called uh, stilettos in red. Your favourite. Uh, let's think of other things. That, uh, so on top of that, you would you could say what brand it is. Uh, you can you can say the price or if it's a price range. Uh, you can do variations. So maybe it's just stilettos, and then you can do colours as different variations. You could do availability and stock levels. That's good. Uh, there are two key ones that Google want you to put in is whether it's in stock and whether it's new or used. Uh, so the, there's core ones that, in fact, schema defines uh, a lot of options. Uh, Google on top of that will say, if you do these, 
you might get rich snippets. So it's dangling uh, that carrot, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so Google actually tells you uh, what they're looking for for the rich snippets. So you do things like uh, you try and put a brand in. You try and uh, you try and put in the manufacturer's part number (NPN) uh, so that Google can actually link that. That say your say twenty different stores are selling the same shoe. Google can work out they're all the same shoe and put them side by side. It makes sense. I mean, and I think for anybody who's sort of this is all going over their head a little bit, if you've ever listed a product on eBay, you have to go through and fill out little fields. And it's like, you mm. know, what's the, is, it, is it new? Is it used? Is it, you know, what's the product number? What color is it? You know, I just, I put a lot of Lego on eBay for my son and I spent a lot of time filling out those boxes. So it's not too far <laughs> different to that. Uh, everyone listening now is crazy excited about Schema and they're like, I totally want to use it. But I think some people will be feeling a bit overwhelmed. You know, I have a store, I have a thousand products. Are you telling me that now I have to go back through each of those products and mark them up individually with little tags? What do I do? How do I do that? Do I do it manually? Should I be using one of those great little WordPress plugins? What's your advice? Try and automate it. Uh, in fact, if you're on e-commerce, uh, it, it really, uh, they're all template driven. So it, it's a case of getting a developer to uh, modify your template files to automatically put that information in there. Uh, typically your page has already got the information on. All they have to do is add a little bit to say the, the name of your product. Uh, in fact, microdata is item prop equals name. That's all you have to add. And so the, you add it to all the different fields on the page uh, and uh, hopefully that means after that, as long as you fill in your product information, it'll automatically be marked up on the page. A lot of the people who I work with are on content management systems. You know, so one, for example, is, is WordPress and I use WooCommerce on my store and it's great. It does most of this for me. I don't really have to I do a lot. Um, you know, it's all the styles are coming up. The product name is clear. Um, how about some other platforms? Like, you know, if you worked with like... Uh, Big Commerce, Shopify, Netto, any of those others? Do they make it easy or do they make it difficult? They, uh, they're kind of halfway. In fact, all, all of them, uh, it's down to uh, whoever developed the template that you're using. Uh, they could easily mess it up. So WooCommerce gets it right. But if someone rewrites the template and uh, breaks what they've done, uh, you lose it. Shopify and Big Commerce both attempt to do it. But uh, I find that they're uh it's a kind of a 50 50 it's it's not a very good uh, implementation and i actually do quite a bit of work on fixing them up what about magento because that's you know that uh, claims it's all bells all whistles but again i've seen some of the markup from there not being too amazing yeah and I'd, I'd probably say that that's the least of your worries in magento <laughs> <laughs> oh let's not tag magento when i no. tweet this um, now, if I've got a WordPress site, it's not a store, it's say a recipe site um, and you know, I'm using WordPress, are there any great plugins that you recommend for people to add schema in? Like, you know, what we love about WordPress is that there's a plugin for everything. Are there good plugins or do you really need to be speaking to the developer and getting them to do this for you? There are plugins, but you've got to be very careful. Uh, recent, this year, a lot of recipe websites got banned, uh, or not banned there, uh, they got uh, basically having rich snippets banned because the plugins were doing uh, dodgy things. Uh, they were adding, uh, so you've got to be quite careful with what you mark up. You can't just say, I got uh, 103 million reviews, all five star, uh, and put it on every page. Google's got guidelines that says, if you do that, we'll ban it. So you've got to be careful uh, and uh, so it's, it's probably always best to have someone who knows how structured data works to review it. You know, once you've set it up correctly and maybe come to an expert like your good self and they've set up those tags, as you said, it's not something that they need to come back in and do again and again and again. It's, you know, once, once you've set it up correctly, right. it's done. But as with all tech stuff on sites, it's a bit painful. You don't really want to do it. You want to focus on all the exciting stuff like writing blog posts and making videos. Mm -hmm. But the tech stuff is the foundation, and once you get that right, you can build your skyscraper on top of it.
But there are some great little tools, and I'll include some links to these in the show notes, that will help you test your structured data, aren't there? The uh, Google provide a couple of tools, and also Google will, uh, if you use the Google Search Console, Google will tell you if you've got it right. And that's coming from the Google bot itself. So, so we can, uh, we'll include a link to that. Now, another quick question. If, if people are listening and feeling a little bit overwhelmed, you know, do they need to include schema markup on every page? And, and you've talked about one main product or one main entity per page. That's enough, right? Yeah, in fact, uh, especially on WordPress lately, uh, I think some schema plugin guys have gone a little bit overboard. And you, you go in there and there's 20 entities on a page and 19 of them are just a distraction. They're, they're, they've got no value at all. Uh, so I'd, I'd recommend, yeah, just stick to each page has one subject and it should have one, maybe two entities on that page to uh, focus on that particular subject. Well, look, we've, we've kind of leaped around with our questions a little bit. We had a bit of a, we had, uh, Tony and I had a very structured plan. Did you see what I did there? Uh, but I think, it, it, I think we've explained it well. We've covered off recipes, local business. We've covered off products. We've explained the benefits. We've explained how it can help your SEO in lots of different ways and that little carrot dangles. Um, so, Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you tell us where we can find more about you and if anyone needs help with their structured data, where should they be heading? Uh, well, you can Google my name. I kind of own it. Uh, so that's Tony <laughs> McCreeth. But with regard to structured data, I'm very active in the Google uh, Webmaster Forums. And so if you've got any problems that, uh, to do with structured data, that's a great place to go. Uh, there's a couple of us there that can really help out and the odd Googler listens as well. Uh, that, that's great advice. And I'm going to include a link to that. I don't think many people realize that these forums exist and there are like experts in there who will, for some lovely reason, help you with your problems. And as you said, sometimes even real Google people dip in and it's kind of like, oh, oh my God. People at Google actually exist. I can, I can read them. So yes, I'll definitely include a link to those and a couple of other tools. There's a great guide from Moz um, on schema and there's a great guide from Google, an introduction as well. So if you really want to dig in deep, and Tony has also sent me the most uber geeky video ever people talking about schema. So I'm going to include that in my show notes as well. But that's only for the crazy, crazy schema fans. Thank you hugely for joining us today and sharing all your your knowledge very much appreciated hope to get you back on the show soon to talk about something else uh so thanks ever so much tony been great see you Bye.